It's time for Ball Talk with Sanford and Johnny. From what's happening on the blue at Boise State to the Mountain West and beyond. The biggest storylines, the best guests, and most outlandish opinions from two dudes who eat, sleep, and breathe college football. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Ball Talk with Sanford and Johnny, featuring former Boise State quarterback and longtime coach Mike Sanford and KTIK 95.3 FM, the tickets, Johnny Mallory on Bronco Nation News. Spring edition, here we are. Where does the time go, Sandman? Episode five tonight. Get your comments, questions. In the comments section, we're going to go crazy tonight, Coach. Any questions you guys have regarding spring football and whatnot for Coach Mike Sanford, let them fly. We'll answer those throughout the programs. Coach, what is that? Is that a DU Pioneers hockey hat you're wearing? You guys, when's the parade? That was a big Frozen Four championship. Just another one. I think it's been 10 now. I mean, how many teams have won 10 championships in any sport? Uh, I mean, DU, just the absolute, you know, it's a, it's a legacy. I mean, it's they're, a they're in the middle of a dynasty right now. Uh, but no, it's not. It's uh, This is actually low single A affiliate of, of my San Francisco Giants. It's a tough start to our year. Bob Beeler and I are in a state of depression. But yeah. it's San Jose Giants, and they have a churro man that's been making churros at San Jose Municipal Stadium for almost 50 years. And so they have the uh, San Jose Churros theme night. So that's a, I don't know. If you, I see you well. Yeah, that is a hell of a churro Swinging there. Churro Holding a right baseball there. bat. Beautiful, man. Well, know, let's have some fun. I don't know if I can see your throwback, you know, uh, Jersey game, but I know for a fact that you can't see anywhere near my minor league baseball hat game. It is legit. Joey, Joey Broadway right there. Yep. Uh, went with Broadway Joe tonight. A little slick Willie. Uh, Pride of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, man. Um, ball talk, spring edition, spring game on Saturday. You've been in more spring games than you can probably count. Just kind of the lead up. Take us back. Put us in a coach's offense or office. And uh, I mean, what what's a win for a coaching staff in a spring game outside, obviously, of the big one of, you know, stay as healthy as you can? I think the first one is that you want the fans to have a good time. You want this to be uh, in an opportunity for the fan base to get riled up, even more fired up than the Boise State fan base is right now for the 2024 season, um, because this really is the final look that you're going to have, and really the only look, if you think about it, over the course of about ten, eight, nine months uh, from you know the the Los Angeles Bowl to opening at Georgia uh, Georgia Southern. So I think that this is a big deal for. Just connectivity with the fan base. You know, I, I've always liked being a part of spring games where fans are are involved. Uh, they, there's there's uh, interaction with the players and the fans, and um, where there is some some connectivity. And, and you know, I, I think I'm I'm in a place right now uh, working you know here in Denver and the media side with what what I think is the best integrated fan base and team maybe in all of sports, and that's the Denver Nuggets and their fan base. And I here do we go. Boise, I mean, they're, you know, they just found out they're playing the Los Angeles Lakers. So uh, that's going to be here in Denver on Saturday. Bronny oh, and, the, and the, dude. Circus, the circus is coming to town. Anyway, that's not about the spring game. And the circus the circus can't beat the Nuggets, by the way. I mean, well, I don't think it's, straight, been, it's been a couple of years. So yeah, eight straight. Uh, but but if you but if you think about it, you want you want your fan base to feel even more connected and even more now in this NIL world. You know, if you have people that have a tremendous experience and you have, you know, it, it could be anybody. It could be a, you know, somebody who who, who makes $30,000 a year and they're willing to, to give $10 a month to the NIL or somebody, you know, that, that makes a ton of bucks and they have, you know, a son or daughter at the scrimmage that has some type of intimate interaction uh, with, you know, a, a Boise State football player or coach that makes them say, like, that's what I love. Um, and I think that that's, those are tremendous opportunities now. And, you know, I think now with the spring games and the NIL, which is kind of a new world, is that this is yeah. a very opportunistic time for programs 
don't know if you saw the the prime dinner here in Boulder. Um, you know, they're selling a seat at the table the night before the spring game with Coach Prime for twenty seven thousand dollars. Did you and buy then, one? Me? Me? Yeah. Yeah. You? Did I did I buy a seat with Coach Prime? All right, twenty seven so, grand, yeah, man. We're good. We're good. Um, and 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 then you could actually pay twenty four thousand dollars. Great deal just to be in the section at a seat, just a, a, a seat in the section near coach prime. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunities wow. to leverage this weekend from an NIL perspective and build your collectives up. Uh, but then I think I also what, what happens on the yeah. field real quick, you know, I think that you're looking for the growth and the operation of your offenses and defenses, the communication, uh, the execution, it should look markedly better than when you started this journey you know, three and a half, five, I guess it's been about four and a half weeks now. Um, you want it to look very different. You want it to look better. You want to see crispness because this really is going to be the last time where you are playing with the kind of the goosebumps on your arms. Uh, the crowd's buzzing a little bit. You smell that popcorn. You smell the hot dogs. You smell those IPAs that are brewed right there from Western Collective. And you're just ready to roll. Uh, <laughs> and, and I think that that's, that's what you want is your players to respond to that environment and execute your offense and defensive and special teams systems at a high level. Um, so it looks clean. You know, you want it to look clean. You just don't want it to be a slop fest. What's the biggest, grandest, I don't know, most well attended spring game that you have ever been a part of? Uh, you know, it was, it was definitely Notre Dame. Um, okay. It was televised by NBC. <laughs> It's kind of like ah, it's a little different than uh than, Damn, than my last yeah. spring game, you know, a year ago. Um, it was <laughs> it was actually it's really neat. It's like Tarico it was... on the call too. I think you guys had Tarico when he was kind of in limbo before he got Sunday night when Michaels went to Amazon. Yeah, spring yeah. game, Notre Dame, NBC. All right, yeah, I'm thinking this was like, yeah, Sandman but, story. Even at Stanford, you know, our spring games were you know attended by a wine and cheese crowd of about eight hundred people. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're looking at 60, 70,000 people at Notre Dame stadium. And I'm like, do these people like wow. this that much? Um, but yeah, that was that, especially um, the 2015 season. And then af after the 15 season, Deshaun Kaiser had had that phenomenal year and going into the 2016 season, I think the expectations were very high for that team. Um, and so we, we had a massive spring game coming off a of Fiesta Bowl. That must have been a fun one. Um, all right, next one. Uh, spring game, NIL. Like, just trying trying to get creative here. Like, would you be opposed if it's your program or if you saw someone else do this? What would be your thoughts? And I'm saying, I picture, you know, after the spring game, you have your little fan fest where the the players are taking pictures and signing autographs with the kids and stuff. Maybe they're at a table. Maybe there's something. I'm thinking, say, there's a player sitting there and you put, their Venmo handle on a card right there, you know, at Sanford O2, um, NIL donations accepted, tip accepted. And if you're in line and you get a picture with your favorite running back, oh, there's his Venmo. I'm going to take a picture of that real quick. And you know what? I'm going to give him 10 bucks. And now that I have his Venmo, if he makes a really cool touchdown or the team wins, I might just drop 20 bucks in his account at halftime. Um, I don't know if that's where the future is going. I don't know why it is illegal. I don't believe it is. Nothing is. But I would imagine if I'm a kid and all of a sudden the fans or some type of deal where it's easy to get money in situations like that, like, yeah, I'll sign autographs for an hour if I put my Venmo, you let me put my Venmo thing up here. And if people want to give a donation, they can and support my, my cause. And here's what I'm doing or not. Well, I, I haven't heard of that happening. I haven't really been in this new world of spring games with the NIL collectives, but I mean, I've if you've never heard of anybody doing it either, man, this is a I, straight I, ball game thinking about, Hey, how could, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it big. And I just say, just make the Jersey. Just customize the jersey. Everybody's got their QR code on the back. Like their entire back of the jersey is a QR code. So you're sitting up there, even if you're looking at the uh, at Bronco Vision, you know, and, and it, on the north end zone, and you can snap the QR code or, you know, you can zoom in on a player. Boom. 
there's your there's your Venmo right there. Um, I mean, it's 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 bananas. It's stupid. Let's just call it like Wouldn't it is. Wouldn't that be crazy? I mean, it, I, but but yeah, I don't it, like I don't, that. I mean, I don't, I don't love it, but I don't either. Yeah. But I <laughs> I don't know that, that that I mean, there's gonna be a program that does that. And uh, they're probably listening to ball talk right now. They're probably sneaking in, you know, and they're, like, they're going to say, you know, yeah, ball talk. we're going to be busy. the first. I'm, I'm, I'm busy grinding on tape right now. No, you know what? We're going to see some QR codes and some spring games on jerseys. Right. And we're going to be the first to do it, you know, yeah. or we're going to put your Venmo handle on the back of your Jersey. So, okay. If you're on the game, you can donate, you can, you can put money in this dude's bank account during the game. If he plays well, like, I don't, I don't, it's crazy where the future is going. I mean, but uh, I was just wondering your take on on that and just NIL, because you were saying you want to give, you want to incorporate NIL into the spring game and give the players in the spring game opportunity to put a few bucks into their pocket where, you know, you're not going to really see much of the football players coach for what, th- three and a half, three months. I mean, that's right. a long time right. there. Yeah, it's your it's your last real opportunity, and I think even more than you know, I, I love the ideas and the conversation we're having is hilarious with regards to yeah, QR yeah. codes on jerseys, which <laughs> I wouldn't put past anybody these days. But or I do get a that, helmet, a sticker. It, it, yeah, it's it's about the interaction with your fans first and foremost because they're going to be filling the stadium, and you want them to be even more invested emotionally in your team. But then the relationships. Uh, that you can you can start to build, you know, over the course of a spring game weekend. And if you put the thing together right, it really should be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where there's opportunities for, you know, for for corporations yeah. to meet with with you know prospective you know NIL representatives, um, you know, and then you have you know your alumni piece, which I know is already going on. Uh, bummed out, I won't be able to be there on Friday. I know there's golf tournaments, but. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities to, especially in a, ta- in a in a city like Boise, that just, I mean, it's it's the show in town. Like, there's no argument. Yeah. You, you know, know that being in Denver now with all this on your damn sports plate, Boise doesn't deal with that. No, you don't have the competition. And so you you really are the reason that the community comes together. And so you have to leverage that and you have to build on that. And you have to find creative ways in these, I guess, benchmark moments to to create opportunities for your players to 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 be competitive uh with the the maybe the lower power five teams and certainly the upper group of five you want to be the best all right coach let's get to a question from some guy named bj uh what did sanford think of the quarterbacks being live in the second scrimmage you mentioned that on a previous episode of ball talk where you've talked to quarterbacks in your life and they're like coach i haven't been hit in like three years. And um, I saw Cody Hawkins also practice this at the Idaho State spring game. He went completely live with his quarterbacks. And, of course, Spencer Danielson did it. Um, you guys ever do that in any places you've been and uh, uh, kind of the risk-reward there? Yeah, I mean, we talked about this on the episode two weeks ago, and I, I'm 100% all for it. Uh, actually, was it, it was last weekend? I believe it was uh, last week's episode. I, I'm 100% all for this. I love this. I love that that Spencer Danielson and, and Dirk Cutter made the decision to do this because it's not real football. If there's a whistle that's being blown subjectively, subjectively, uh, you know, when a, a defensive lineman is either near the quarterback um, and you also don't have a chance to see what the quarterback can do after the play. And Johnny, let's just call a spade a spade. The modern day of college and pro football is all about the second play. There is no second play in a scrimmage where the quarterbacks aren't live. So you can never get a true evaluation of who are the elite second play quarterbacks and who are the guys that are going to make some boneheaded decisions when the second play does, does unfold and who can protect themselves and get yards has the instincts to get the yards, to move the chains, but then protect themselves to avoid the stupid hit. Um, Something that I wasn't very good at because I, I love (laughs) contact, man. I wanted some freaking contact. Every now and again, just the court. Yeah, you just want to get hit. What about Dougie D here? What do you look for in a spring game to be able to evaluate where your team is? Well, I, I think this: you always want your defense to be ahead. <laughs> That's the bottom line. I, I'd say this, Johnny, is I've been a part of some spring games where the offense that I was calling was like boat racing our defense, and everybody's coming up to me on the offensive staff. Oh yeah, he did. Oh, man, Sandman, did that call on third and seven, brilliant. Yeah, dude. <laughs> And I'd be like, 
Hey, fellas, that's bad news. We're not very good on defense. <laughs> and that's a real thing, Johnny. It is it is as real as you can imagine, man, because it, if if you are well ahead of your defense, um, sorry, I'm having some microphone issues. I've been using this thing too much. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, when are you on tomorrow, first off? Uh, 6 a.m. Six. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get up at 4.30. So I'm on with my guy, Vic Lombardi, who uh, called – the Los Angeles Lakers, he, he he called them out at the parade and said that uh, Michael Malone, the head coach of the Nuggets, is the Lakers' daddy. So that's no. a big – yeah, so the who's your daddy chants are going to be loud at Ball Arena. But anyway, so oh, I'll be yeah. on 6 to 9 tomorrow. Uh, what, what, what we were on the subject of um, is – you want your defense because they know they know your schemes, they know your systems. You they see them every single day, and I think what neutralizes a game is the defense. You know they they don't exactly know what's coming in a real game. They do, and yeah. they, they know a lot of your tendencies. They know your calls. You know they know how you communicate. And if your defense is so far behind that you're scoring on tons of possessions, it's gonna be a long fall. It's gonna be a really long fall. And I've never been a part of a of a team where I was coming out of the spring game and I'm like, dude, I'm freaking, I am Lincoln Riley meets John Gruden meets, you know, uh, Bill Walsh right now after that spring game and felt good about it because it's the worst feeling in the world. You know, you're going to be, you're probably going to get fired and you're going to have to move family. Hey, do, uh, do John Gruden telling people how smart Chris Peterson is. Hey, there's this guy. Uh, he, you know, he's a small school. Hey, I think it's the school that plays up there in uh, that blue turf. This guy's name is Chris Peterson. Smart guy. Real, real smart. He he loves studying the game of football. <laughs> loves it. Went up there up to Boise, yeah. sat down, and took so much from him about just the way he teaches the footwork of quarterbacks. <laughs> Just mind blowing type stuff. Chris Peterson, look him up on Wikipedia. You'll learn a thing or two about football. I love it. Um, languages like foreign languages, quarterback languages. You want to talk um, about Coach Green Hunter. Right West, V Counter, yep. Spider 2 Y Banana, Kill, Sluggo. Sword. Can I throw in a Sluggo seam in Let's there, Coach? Can I We're going to go Kill 58 F Sluggo. Zebra seam alert. Hound two double go. Damn, I'd love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring it. Hound two double go. Um, so that, hey, go ahead. Yeah, what is languages? You, you got me. You got start, my engines riled up, man. Start with the coaching aspect of learning a new language and teaching a new language. You've been at spots where it was probably as foreign as football foreign can get. You've been at spots where you speak the language already. You've been at spots where you come and you are teaching your language to a large group of people. What's that like for coaches? Well, you know, the thing you got to do is that you got to spend so much time with your staff as a coordinator. You have to you, like the time with your staff before you even have a chance to talk to the players, because a lot of your staff, when you go to these jobs, a lot of places that I went, I was the only guy, you know, that was coming with that verbiage or I was the only guy coming with my philosophy of how an offense should look. And if you don't, if you can't get your offensive staff on the same page and you can't get them up to speed and then you can't get them invested, you got it. You're going to have an uphill battle, man. And yeah. so you spend a ton of time. And I went through an exercise at CU before, you know, the, the 2022 season, we know it didn't go well. Uh, we don't need to re rehash that, but I went through an exercise where we, as a staff, we came from so many different places that we started from scratch and built the terminology and the offensive scheme together as a staff. And I did that because I'd had so many issues um, by being the only guy on the staff, you know, that everybody else may have been together. Uh, there might have been, you know, one guy that I could I could kind of get on the same page with. I mean, that that it's brutal, man. And that's wow. what's hard about oh, being an offensive coordinator. You know, I think about a guy like Bush right now. You go in and you're I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Bush is the only guy that really went as a full-time coach to Kentucky. That's that how speaks, I, that speaks Peterson, right? And it, or you know, and really, it's 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 Cutter, it's Helfrich, it's Peterson, it's the whole deal, yeah. right? Um, yeah. You know, it, it really, frankly, it's Bilotti. I mean, that's really where it comes from. It's Mike Bilotti. It's crazy. Um, okay. But 
but you know, I, I think that having kind of endured some of the scars that came from not not getting the full buy-in from the offensive staff or they had a different vision of how things should go or they just wanted to stay status quo with what had been done the year before. That's uh, got to be uh, tough, man. It, it's not tough. It's absolutely – it's it, it's like showing up to work every day and, and just kind of getting in a wide stance and just having somebody kick you straight in the nuts for about Yikes. a year and a half. It's brutal. Uh, mm. it's, it's the worst thing you can imagine. So when I got to see you – uh, I wanted the entire staff to have investment. I wanted to have them to have buy-in. I wanted them to have some skin in the game um, so that they're like, oh, yeah, that's the, I, I named that, you know? And, and, okay. and I think that's important because, man, there's so much money at stake in college football uh, and every coach in that room, whether they're a great dude, a bad dude, the worst dude ever, every single one of them, they want that. They want. They want some more of that money involved. They want that next yeah. check. They want that raise. And don't think that they're not all posturing for their next position. And that deal's real. So you got to find a way to make it real and organic, and and uh, the you, where you actually can go back to true relationships. And I think that's the hardest thing right now in college football is it's it's an every man out for themselves type of mindset. Well, so what is it like again? You know, you're for for a coach. Is it harder? to learn someone else's language than teach someone your language. I mean, yeah. you probably had to do both. Yeah, I think it's it's way easier to learn somebody else's language. And I would say that's a gift of mine. Like, I, I'm fluent in Spanish just randomly. Yeah. Um, Are you really? Hundred. Yeah, just, I just, I, I studied it from the time I was a sixth grader all the way until my fifth year at Boise State. I minored in it in college. And I speak wow. Spanish. So. For whatever Dude. reason, I just, I've always enjoyed language. I took German. I took Japanese. Uh, I'm not fluent at all in either one of those two. Um, but that's, I like yeah, learning language, okay. and I think that's it's always been easy for me to to pick up somebody else's language um, than it is for me to ask a hundred, you know, or let's say seventy five people, including the staff and the GAs, QCs, and all the offensive players, to learn my language. Um, so the the hard the downside of doing it that way, Johnny, is that Sometimes you'll get players that are kind of looking at you like, did you, even, is this even yours? You know? And that's the, that's the hard part too, is that you, you're like, is this even really me? Is this really my background, my ethos? Um, and, and there, there are some challenges. Cause I think languages in, even in football with offensive terminology, you know, they create some barriers. There, there's some things that, you know, if a system is built a certain way, it can be really challenging to get certain plays or to get certain tags or to get certain routes that are altered based off of, you know, how the system was already built or even formations. I've been a part of some formational systems. Like when I took, when I uh, took the job at Notre Dame, you know, inherited the Notre Dame uh, verbiage, brought a lot of new concepts, but you know, the, <laughs> the, uh, the formation system, system of term terminology was, was very, very limiting. Um, and it made it very challenging. Well, give me an example of a play in, you know, uh, Peterson language and a play in, oh, I guess in this case, our Notre Dame language or another football language that you speak. Now, this is the same, pretty much the same play, but it's going to sound entirely different uh, for the audience. That's a good one. Um, let's go with, uh, we're going to go with Doc Left. And we'll go dive right, climb. Okay, that would be that would be like old, like semi old Boise State. Okay, and that's okay. that's the you've probably heard a lot of people talk about the Y cross play. Y cross is a staple in the air raid offense. Um, okay, that's that that's but it's been a staple in the Boise State system. It's a staple at Notre Dame. Um, so to to call that at Notre Dame, it would be. Gosh, it's been a while. Um, let me think about this. That was how many years ago? Nine, nine years ago. Uh, let's. I, I, I'm gonna botch. I'm gonna butcher this, but it's it's okay. Okay. Um, let's go. Give me uh, an example. Yeah. No, I I got it. It's just it, it, I'm looking. I'm searching. It's like seven languages ago. Um, we're gonna go. Yeah, man. We're gonna go army toes. We're gonna go. K sixty two. Ozzy X Pearl. Same play. Totally different language, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, yep. I, 
that's got to be hard. I want to get your opinion on being a quarterback and how do you have to teach him. But I was when you guys steal other people's plays, like you've said on ball talk before that, you know, uh, for example, Harse or whoever you were work for would see a really sexy play that Andy Reid would pull off on Sunday night football. He'd come into your office or whatever coach does and says, hey, I want you to see this play that the Chiefs ran in the third quarter. I think maybe we should put it in and install it. Like, I, for example, I was talking to Kirby Moore. This is, a, I think they beat Florida. And he had this scheme on the goal line, a quarterback sneak, and it just fooled like four. It was brilliant, okay? So I sent him a text, and I'm like, dude, that goal line scheme on fourth and goal, like, Jesus, Kirby, nice call. And he just texts back, and he's like, I stole it from Lane Kiffin two weeks ago. Um, (laughs) He's go back and watch the old Miss game. They ran the same play. I literally just was watching the game, and I stole it. And they ended up running it, like, on a fourth down in a really important spot in the game. When you do that, when you steal a play, and so then you just incorporate that play, but you translate it into your language. So essentially any play in football, you're going to be able to translate into your specific language. I don't think a lot of people out there realize just how complex it is and how much learning in the, the terminology, man, that's crazy. Yeah. What, what has made it a lot easier than say when I was playing for coach Pete, you know, because I, I've told you multiple times that there were, you know, it was like Tuesday's installation during a game week. You yeah. know, there'd be there'd be just I think it was hand drawn. Uh, you know, in boxes there were like twelve boxes. You know, and they, they were like hand stenciled plays from him. New, yeah, from I think from him, maybe a GA. I can't remember okay. exactly. And uh, with the new terminology of what we're going to call this brand new scheme, and so you all you had was just boxes on a piece of paper and this brand new scheme. And so back then we were, we were, we were playing out. I mean, we were watching videotape. I yeah. mean, we were watching actual VHS videotape. Absolutely. So the, the accessibility of being able to get the, the actual film and then make a cut up with it was so hard. So it was like, I would look at this page, like it'd be sometimes it'd be like four pages, 12, 12 boxes, 12 boxes, 12 boxes, 12 boxes, and like brand new offenses, like brand new plays. And I, it'd be like middle of the season. And I'd be like, Hey people, like I'd go in the next Tuesday. I'd be like, Hey, what new offense are we putting in this week? You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and so it was hard to, it was hard to memorize it at times. Whereas nowadays film of all college and pro teams is readily available, you know, through your, you know, everybody does exchange. And then now there's this pro football focus that, yep. you know, PFF film is available and you can just, you can just sort trick plays. Right now, boom, every trick play that was run in week three of the National Football League. On first oh, down, hey, second down, third down, yeah, fourth yeah, down. Uh, yeah. And then the great thing is then you just, all you do is you take that clip, you 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 mark it, and then you build a cut up, and then you put these awesome overlays. I've even, nowadays you can uh, get creative with a, a title slide and, you know, you, you can introduce the new concept. And some some players are visual learners, some are conceptual mm-hmm. learners. And so in, in those cutups that you're putting together, you want them to be able to hit every learning style. And so now you're able to do even more. And I think the video technology has made that job a lot easier. Whereas like back in the day, you know, I think there were times where Pete would see some things that he really liked. A lot of times it was just the opposing um, uh, other offenses against the upcoming defense that we were about to see. And so he would show us the clips of those um but now if you're just going out randomly pirating, literally pirating ball plays, yeah. you can just pull from anywhere. You can now pull they from are. high school. They you do. see some sweet in high yeah. school. I got it on huddle. I got it on huddle.com. And I can just say, I can send it over to my video guy and be like, Hey, I want to clip this in. There's a sweet little uh, reverse that, you know, Allen high school ran against cop hell in <laughs> Dallas, Texas. And, and it makes it so much easier. Um, so yeah, it, it's really, it's really about, having some people on your staff that are committed to like their job assignment on a weekly basis is to basically research and develop in real time and then present it to me, the coordinator. I'm going to go through the cut up and, you know, say, okay, this would be good against this defense. This, uh, this is, this team's not a man to man coverage defense. Why are we even looking at this? Boom. Next play, next play. Okay. All right. I like this. 
And then you, you whittle it down to the things that you like. You show it to the staff, see what they like, what they think is teachable. And then you go implement it to the, to, to the offense. I like doing new things with the entire offensive unit together so they can hear one voice teach it. Um, sometimes okay, so like, you'll install like, a play with the whole unit in new, the team. Yeah, if it's new. Um, I like to do that from the standpoint of uh, in, in brand new schemes with the pressures and the stresses of a game week. It's like a game of telephone. The way you installed it with the staff, you take you know one more person away from Dang. it, and all of a sudden yeah. you get on the field and you're like, you look at the X receiver and you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then you go, you know, then you I I do the little march over the receiver coach. I'm like, hey, what did you tell him? You know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, that well, coach, probably I, happens daily. Oh, it's so in fun. the world of college football too, with the lines of communication. Uh, now, I hate Peter- I hate wasting time at practice. Did did Peterson show up for your quarterback coach your red shirt freshman year? Yeah, so it was just right player. after my. It was right after at the end, really in January, coming back from you know winter break. Um, it was it was right then and there. So um, uh, the, the whole the did whole you staff, know? Did you know anything about Chris Peterson before he showed up? Thing. Maybe through your dad or something. Nothing. What was your first like when you when you finally sat there and you were like, or maybe you did or didn't like. Holy smokes! This guy is a is a savant here. How how do we get this guy? Like, do you have do you remember where you were when you thought this guy? I think really knows what he's doing. Uh, you know, it it was I, my first impression was like he looks so young. Like Pete looked, yeah. I and mean, he still looks young for his age, but he looked so know. young. And I was like, you know, and he was, you know, high energy, high strung, you know, high strung guy. Um, and I also remember that he and Chris Strasser were introduced back to back as to the to the team as new coaches and at the time i was like they look like, like they're twin brothers you know <laughs> like, I'm like they look the yeah. same um you know and, and then i think it's when we when we got together you know it, it went from the full team having i mean we we had a brand new staff it was hawk was the head coach and yeah then it, was, okay. it was a full new staff so everybody yeah. was essentially new robert prince was new um mm. i'm trying to think of all the other guys that were new um collins was he there yeah. with hawk ron, uh, ron, ron collins was new um yeah there were a bunch of new new faces and you know it's it's it, for, for, i mean nowadays it's so normal that staffs turn over every year but oh, yeah. that, i mean it's it's traumatic man you're like oh man just when i was starting to figure out Dirk and uh and and healthy you know and now i got i got another guy to try to figure out and try to please him you know um, were those languages were those languages similar because very, that's kind of my my okay yeah, that's they were what, that's kind of yeah. my yeah and, and ultimately pete came from oregon right so um yep. you know it, it, that's where dirt came from so it's really not mm-hmm. that different uh there was there was a way that dirt had blended <laughs> it's kind of neat but there so there's two predominant terminology systems that have been predominant in the national football league for the last, I don't know, since Eric Coriel, Don Coriel and Bill Walsh. West coast and, old systems. Yeah. Yeah. But Don Coriel, everybody says he's a West coast offense guy, Don Coriel, um, and Paul Brown, they went a, a certain way and everything was numbered. So the route tree was literally numbered. So that's where we get, Hey, gotcha. you, you know, he just ran a nine route yeah. or people say a seven route as a corner or post corner. That was from that was from that, and then to the modern day, that went to uh, it went down to North Turner. My dad coached in that system at the Chargers okay. with North Turner, and then it got passed down to Shane Steichen, now the the uh, head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. And then the other system is the West Coast system, where everything has a word, and then mm. almost every person has a tag. Well, Dirk had coached in both of those worlds. And so Dirk brought the, uh, essentially the offense that I learned first was a combination of the digit system and the West coast system, which was, I didn't know at the time. I just thought it was crazy and it didn't ever make sense. It was the, the digit system was for our two back offense. And then the, the West coast terminology was for our one back offense. And so I was, I was getting, I mean, frankly, I was getting a dang doctorate in real time without knowing a dang thing about it. In two in the two predominant systems of the National Football League, which obviously trickles down to college football. So that's um, sweet, man. Yeah, well, Pete kept a lot of that. I think that Dirk's offense, I would say in 2000, I think would was more pure with the digit system. 
and then Pete's system kind of morphed more towards the West Coast terminology, um, c- concepts, and then tags. And and then I think it more evolved completely away from the digit system. What about uh, quarterbacks learning systems? And I would imagine, I mean, obviously the kid goes from his high school system to FBS major college terminology. In this case, say K- uh, Malachi Nelson. I mean, he backed up Caleb Williams last year for crying out loud. He was in the quarterback room with a guy who is going to be the face of football, at least for the draft in a week or so. And he probably took him a long time to learn Lane Kiffin's terminology. And I'm sure you're probably familiar with a lot of the stuff that Lane Kiffin and Air Raid does, right? And he's learning that. And then he comes to Boise State. He just learned a system. And then the terminology is all different. You've probably seen a lot of quarterbacks come in and they're, hell, they're happy they've kind of learned one language. And now you're like, well, sorry, you know, red right in that system is now, you know, Z, you know, Z banana, you yeah. know, whatever the case yeah. is. It's oh, like yeah. a totally right. and it doesn't make sense. There's no rhyme or reason. So now I got to learn this like, damn, that's got to be t- tough for the kid, but also tough for the coach to try to, to teach him this stuff. You remember in, uh, I think it's a movie. Oh, man. Uh, Will Smith movie, uh, Men in Black. Do you remember the whole, there was that, that thing where you shine the light in front of them and then just erase their entirety of their memory? love that part. I am a big believer in that. If you're going to change systems is that you, and I actually tell the players, I tell the quarterbacks, I'm like, all right, you guys, I show them the clip, you know, from the movie and, you know, hold up that light in front of their eyes. And I'm like, I'm doing that to you right now. I'm not going to take your old system and try to make it a, uh, you know, a, a like, this is what used to be called this. I, I did everything I could to not do that because if you teach it that way and your system to teach it that way is this used to be this. Now it's this, they're going to continue to think about that. And they're going to have that same mindset, even maybe in the first game of the year and their process totally. is slower, even at the line of scrimmage. And so what I do is that, you know, I, I love this. We did this at CU is we had an entire two months dedicated to football school. And the first six weeks, was teaching the offensive players. We had, we built a curriculum just like a class. It was they had they had textbooks. Um, we had it all built into presentations. How to teach defensive identification? How we call every player on the defense? Like I don't care what our defense calls them necessarily. I might, but we're gonna call this guy always the nose tackle because he's the one who's mm. closest to the center. We're gonna call the guy that's over the guard, the three technique, but we're going to call him the D tackle. We're going to call the, the the boundary defensive end. We're going to call him the rush. We're going to call the field defensive end. He's the end. We're going to call the field outside linebacker. He's going to be the same, no matter what we're going to call the middle of three linebackers, the mic, and we're going to call the, the boundary inside backer could be an outside backer. If he lines that way, we're going to call him the will. And we're going to call the corner, they're just corners, and they don't they don't have respect of, of individuality. But they're just they're yeah, just, just corner, yeah, corner. Then the field safety is going to be the dollar sign, the strong safety. We're going to call them the strong safety because it's an S with another line through it, SS. And then we're going to call the boundary safety the free safety. So that literally, you start from scratch about teaching them how we're going to talk when we're breaking down film, when we're identifying who pressured. We're going to all speak the same language. Then I taught fronts, the defensive fronts, how defensive lines can align and what the weaknesses are of each front so that I can ha- start to integrate thoughts about the run game and, and how to potentially make checks to the line of scrimmage to exploit particular fronts. From there, you get in you know, to different pressures and how pressures, because I, I, I always wanted the quarterbacks to understand um, that what is happening up front is going to give you an indicator of what's happening in the back end on the secondary. And you can get all kinds of cues because there's going to be a void in every defense that is going to be accounted for by somebody from the back end, a boundary safety, a field safety, a blitzing boundary corner. And so teaching them from the front back helps them understand then, okay, then we can start looking at particular aspects of the defense and how we can identify that. How um, long so does it take? I mean, how yeah, long I, does it take? I mean, that was a six-week course. Six-week course, I think it was three hours a week. 
So, I mean, that's a lot yeah. of man, you know, that's a lot of hours, you know, teaching that. It is. And then, and then, you know, the, the last two weeks, it was one week dedication dedicated solely to uh, the formations, the motions, the shifts. And then the, the following week was day one install, like day one, just that's it. I didn't want to get to day seven, eight, nine. You start clouding their brain. You know, I wanted to get to day one install and, uh, and then, you know, when you get to spring, you want to hit, be able to hit the ground running uh, when spring ball starts. All right, let's uh, let's do a mic drop in 90 seconds. All Bronco Nation news broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is RowPaint.com. For all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs, check out RowPaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact RowPaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is RowPaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU.com. Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone, get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line, and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bauscher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BauscherRealEstate.com. Spring edition, episode five. Let's set it up. Looking forward to another Bronco Brew Coffee mic drop. Mike Drop brought to you by Bronco Brew Coffee, the greatest concept of NIL fundraising opportunities combined with elite coffee. Get yourself signed up, get a subscription for your Bronco Brew Coffee and support your Boise State athletes, teams, you name it. They got it. Get your coffee, get your support on. For this Mike Drop, we're going to talk about this thing called the Spring Transfer Portal. Oh, the string, the spring transfer portal. If you're on X, the app formerly known as Twitter, you see it. It's been very active and there's been a lot of programs that have been very active. Let me educate you a little bit on the spring transfer portal from people I talk to in the coaching industry and personnel industry in college football. You don't want to get a whole lot of solutions from the spring transfer portal because they're not going to exist. Here's why. You had the opportunity to make a decision to find a new home back in December and January. You didn't do it. Or you did do it, and you're ready to jump back in there. What does that sound like? It sounds like there's a reason for why you're leaving your said institution. The Spring Transfer Portal is really built in a program to fill up a hole. Not a hole. A hole. Not all the holes, not seven holes, just one, maybe two. So don't expect Boise State, don't expect your favorite college programs to go out and, and just immediately solve all the issues by, by way of the spring transfer portal because that is not where the quality is going to lie. The portal is much better in the December, January period of time. So Boise State, as of last time I checked on all the social platforms, no spring entry transfer portal players, meaning that nobody's left the program. This is a good sign, a really good sign. Will there probably be some players that enter the portal after spring ball? Probably, but it's probably going to be most likely because of reasons like I was told I'm not going to be in the in the two deep. I'm going to be a scout team player for the third year in a row. I'm a walk on, just wants to play. It's going to happen. Should you panic? No. Now, if you have 10, 15 players enter the portal, and some of which are real significant contributors or depth pieces in the two deep, yeah, you should be concerned. That's real. 
That's happening right now at college football programs all across the country. What does that mean when that many players are entering the portal from the program during the, str- uh, the spring? It means there might be some issues inside that program. But Boise State, as I can see right now, you got nothing to worry about. Go out to the spring game. Watch this roster. Watch this group of guys that have committed to being Boise State Broncos to wear the greatest uniform on co- in college football and the greatest field in college football. Get out to that spring game. Support them. Love on those dudes. And make sure that you get your one opportunity, your one opportunity to watch this team play football before it's time to go strap it on against Georgia Southern. Go out and watch Malachi Nelson, P.J. Tiller, his growth. Watch Austin Bolt, who right now is the leader in the clubhouse at the receiver position based off Dirk Cutter's comments. Your local boy, your Bora boy. Go out and watch your Broncos, support your Broncos, and most importantly, just go be part of the best community gathering in all of Boise, Idaho, frankly, in all of Idaho, which is to go to anything associated with Boise State football. Be there at the spring game. Go support your Broncos. It's a mic drop. Well done, Sandman. We're going to end it on that. Everybody enjoy the spring game. We'll catch you on Ball Talk to uh, wrap up the spring game. You good, Sandman? I'm good, brother. Take it's got care, an early wake-up call, man. I got a good, a good early wake-up call. Awesome being on the show with you, brother. Always, man. Bo-